<laughs> All right, so tonight, <laughs> sorry, um, tonight we're going to uh, do the Beatitudes, the second uh, half of the Beatitudes. We've already done the first four, and it is commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount. So the first four Beatitudes are our attitude towards God, as we've studied um, in the last couple of weeks. And so the last Beatitudes are our attitude towards our brethren, our, to fellow Christians, and, and also to the unsaved. So it says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And the last one, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So tonight we're going to go and we're going to uh, examine the, the, the fifth one, which is blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And it's, it's a subject that's pretty dear to my heart because it's something that the world and the Christians don't really partake or practice, shall I say. So um, now as we come to the four Beatitudes that point towards those around us, meaning our family and our friends, our colleagues at work. And the thought behind this, this Beatitude is that once we come into a covenant, covenant relationship with God, and we begin to walk with him and receive mercy from him, then God's gracious attitude towards others wells up within us. So it means really that when we are in an environment where we have people that are toxic, people that are unsaved, people that are unruly, uh, people that are just demonic, um, God teaches us that we should be gracious and have a different attitude towards those people because we too were one of those people that were in the world before we got born again we might not be as bad as they are but god's still had mercy upon us so the believers in christ have a an inner desire to extend mercy to those around them and often we allow ourselves when we had a traffic light and we see somebody begging the holy spirit just and within us moves us to maybe give them a couple of rand to buy some food or whatever the case might be. And sometimes just to pray for them. And that desire that is within us is the Holy Spirit that actually helps us to move that mercy around within us to help those people, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. So to the degree we allow God's Spirit to lead and guide us, um, it is to the same degree that we feel compassion for people when they are going through painful circumstances. Um, you guys went through your circumstances, I've been through my circumstances, but yet the people around me and around you, we prayed for you, you prayed for me, we, we, we have this compassion for one another. And that is how we know that we are truly born again, that we are truly children of the Most High God, is when we feel compassion for our fellow Christians, and especially our family and our friends, and uh, where we have a special bond with people, because that's the Holy Spirit in us that that comes alive within us and, and tells us to pray for those people and to to help them. And I think it's a it's a very interesting um, thought that we, as God's children, need to be more so um, uh, um, uh, uh, be more compassionate, shall I say, for those that are in the world as well not just our brothers and sisters in Christ, but more so in the world, because we know that they are unsaved, and should anything happen to them, they go to hell. And that's a sad thought. So the, the lesson that we've learned from being merciful is uh, last week we did, the, or the week before, uh, we did the scripture with Simon the Pharisee that invited Jesus uh, to come for supper. And... Um, Simon the Pharisee had to learn when the sinful woman came to the table and wept over Jesus' feet. If you remember in Luke 7, uh, we we spoke about him where he was saying, well, why is this prophet allowing this really bad woman or sinful woman to touch him? So Simon had no mercy for the sinful woman whose heart was touched by Jesus. So the merciful person remembers the guilt and the unhappiness he was once in and has the power within to extend God's mercy to others. And so I want to 
awaken in you all the times when when you were in a bad place, you know, in a, in a in a space where you needed forgiveness, where you needed to be touched by other people, to be prayed and loved by other people, and to be supported by other people, because you found yourself in a place of unhappiness. And so God's mercy towards others is should be a driving force within us <clears throat> on a daily basis, not just when we feel good or we're having a good day. <clears throat> but it's important for us to remember that God had mercy upon us first. So Simon the Pharisee never felt the weight of guilt for his sin. So he could not feel compassion for the sinful woman. So the unsaved generally don't have guilt towards any other people. And very seldom do you find that the worldly people show kindness and compassion for other people. Jesus talked in terms of a love response to the woman's debt of sin being forgiven. And if you remember, she came and she wept on the Lord's feet and used her hair to, to, um, to dry them. And then she also, she used an alabaster of oil and she used the oil to anoint his head. And when the Pharisee sort of questioned uh, um, Jesus, he, he used the, the, the scripture to say to him, if there were two people that owed a lot of money, which one would feel the most gratitude, the one that owed the least or the most? And the Pharisee obviously replied the most. And then Jesus said exactly that, because this woman had a lot of sin in her life and Jesus forgave her because of his compassion towards her. Okay, but the Pharisee never, Simon the Pharisee never had anything about compassion for her to 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 uh, forgive her or to help her or, or even to let her sit with Jesus. So the thing for us is we feel thankful for being forgiven their sin, the debt, and let others off the hook when they sin against them. So we feel thankful, for example, if you borrow 20 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 rand from somebody uh, because you, you you didn't have any cash on you, whatever the case might be, and the, the next time you see that person, oh, there's the 100 rand I owe you. Oh, no, don't worry about it. You, know, you can buy coffee the next time. And it's this reciprocation of love and kindness and compassion towards other people. And it's not because we don't have. <clears throat> but the best thing for me is when you help other people in whatever way, knowing <clears throat> that they cannot repay their debt. And that's when we have this kindness and this compassion for those people to say, you don't want it, it's a gift. And that's what Jesus was talking about to Simon the Pharisee. Her debt, her sin was forgiven by Jesus because her debt was big, her debt was large. And I think the same thing for us, the people that are indebted to us, we should set them free. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have this um, unforgiveness, okay, or this, this hard attitude towards any of those that have wronged us or harmed us. And so those that have been forgiven, like me, I've been forgiven, you've been forgiven, you too probably in any relationship have probably said things, done things, and you've had to forgive your, your friend or your spouse or your mother or your father, your auntie, your uncle, or your brother or your sister. We've had to forgive them. So from this platform of strength, we can actually say it's easier for us to forgive and have compassion on other people because we've been in the receiving end of that kindness and compassion. So it's easier for us to do that or to allow someone escape from blame or responsibility or an obligation or difficulty because the kindness and compassion of Jesus is in us and that's the driving force behind the compassion and forgiveness. So the beatitude or the beautiful attitude that we were talking about 
is mercy. And I remember when I got born again, um, the Lord had mercy upon me. I, I just felt I'm not worthy to even be in the same room as the Lord because I, I wasn't a really bad human being, but I knew in my heart I was worldly. But Jesus forgave me and Jesus had mercy upon me and he, for, he forgave me all my sin and made me a brand new creature in Christ. And that's the kind of mercy that we need to have in our hearts. Because remember, before we got saved, we were just like the people in the world. So when believers, we live this attitude out in the world, the world find it unnatural because it is unnatural to the world system that we live in. Because they often say, well, why are you doing that? You know, what's your agenda? Because that's not the way the world system works, because the world system is run by Satan. But this is the way that Jesus lived. And he, and even as he was crucified, he extended mercy to those that nailed the spikes into his hands, because he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. That's in Luke 23, verses 34. So God often puts his servants, us, into a trial or a test of faith to see how they react to someone who has hurt them in the past. Is there still a desire within us to see them get the punishment that they deserve for the way they hurt us? And we need to examine ourselves when, when we read this and when, when we hear the, 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 the teaching is because we need to be like Jesus. Jesus says, imitate me, do as I do. And what does he do? He forgives those that are crucifying him. That is an example that's very hard to follow uh, for me personally. But I know that over the years I've learned to think that way and to behave that way because there is no other way. Because I was unsaved and God had mercy upon me. And I'm now a new creation in Christ because of his mercy. And I think it's important for all of us to take note that we too need to behave in that manner, in mercy. So can we deal out grace and mercy to those who don't deserve it? Valid question. So having received God's mercy in the test, God grades us according to how we behave towards others. Elsewhere, the Lord told, told the parable, about this attitude of being merciful. So I want to go back to the sentence where it says that God grades us according to how we behave towards others. Remember, God says he knows our heart. He knows our attitude. He knows our motives. So we can never con the Lord. We can never try and pull the wool over the Lord's eyes. He knows us. He knows our attitudes. He knows everything. And that's why it's so important for us to behave different and kind and compassionate towards others, even if they don't deserve it. You're all been in this place, and so have I. And it's a place that is uh, uh, a place of forgiveness. Because remember, if we don't forgive, God doesn't forgive us. Very important. So in Matthew 18, 21 to 35, we're not, we don't have time to read it, but I'd like you to read it when you get the time. In verse 21, it says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother who sins against me? Up to seven times? Peter asked. I'm thinking seven times to forgive someone? Yeah, maybe. Then Jesus answered and said, I tell you, not just seven times, but 77 times. I can imagine Peter's reaction, 77 times, really, Lord. That's what I would say. <laughs> Verse 23, because of this, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. And as he began the settlements, a debtor was brought to him owing 10,000 talents. Now, 10,000 talents in those days was a hefty amount of money. 
25, verse 25, since the man was unable to pay, the master ordered that he had to be sold to pay his debt along with his wife and his children and everything that he owed. Then the servant fell on his knees before him. Have patience with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. His master had compassion on him and forgave him his debt and released him. That says a lot because the word compassion in, his, in the sentence is he had compassion on him and forgave him his debt and released him and set him free. If we had to sit and say, if I was that master, would I do the same? And so it's important for us to learn from this beautiful attitude that it's about forgiveness. There are a lot of things we, if it's in our power to forgive, we ought to forgive. Let's read further. In verse 28, when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Wasn't that, that wasn't a lot of money. But he grabbed him and began to choke him, saying, pay back what you owe me. Now imagine this. This guy owed a fortune, and his master forgave him and said, okay, you're forgiven. He walks out, sees somebody that owes him a small amount of money, nearly chokes the life out of him, saying, pay back what you owe me. He never learned anything, did he? I don't think so. Verse 29, so his fellow servant fell down and begged him, have patience with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay his debt. When his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and recounted all of this to their master. So let's read further. Verse 32, then the master summoned him and declared, you wicked servant, I forgave all your debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? Verse 34, in anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should repay all that he owed. Now, verse 35, that is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. So Matthew 18, 21 to 35 is a very interesting passage. Because Jesus says in verse 35, that is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. So let's go back and have a look at what the Master did. He said, shouldn't you have shown mercy to your fellow servant? Mercy is the key word there, fellow servant. Verse 34, in anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured, not just to be jailed, but to be tortured until he should repay all that he owed. So that's food for thought for us. Okay. God forgave us our sins when we became born again believers. He cleansed us. The blood of Jesus washed us clean. He says we were brand new creation in Christ Jesus. We had a clean slate. Everything was forgiven. What this passage is saying to us is that we too should clean the slate of all those and forgive all those that have fought against us. Why? The key sentence here, Jesus said, that is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart, meaning I forgive you. It's done. It's settled and walk away. Something to think about. So the question we need to ask ourselves, have we been emotionally hurt by our parents, our friends? spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, can you set them free from the justice you demand they should receive for the wrong you've they've done to you? And again, the word they 
in the Greek text is emphatic, meaning they alone shall obtain mercy. And I think that is something that will ring home for us. Okay, if we show mercy, we shall obtain mercy. And what mercy shall we obtain? We shall obtain favor from the Lord. When we sin and we go before him and we say, Lord, I messed up, please forgive me. He will show mercy towards us. But if we don't show mercy towards others, not going to happen. And that's why the Bible says it is important for you to forgive. That's why the scripture says when you come to, to pray, it says before you pray, go and forgive and make right with those that, that have ought against you as in conflict and forgive them and then come back. Because if we don't forgive, God doesn't forgive us. So he doesn't hear our prayers. So most of us that have got unforgiveness in our hearts towards whoever, the attitude that we should have is have mercy, forgive, clean the slate, because then and only then can we come into God's presence when we need to obtain mercy. And when we find ourselves in that in that place where we need mercy, we know that God will show mercy towards us. So my heart's desire for us as believers in, is that we need to walk in mercy every single day of our lives. We need to walk in forgiveness towards those that have, have harmed us or said bad things about us. Because when we do, God our Father forgives us and we obtain God's mercy when we need it. That's what this beatitude is always is, is about. And I think this beautiful attitude, which which I love the 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 way they said it, is if we can take our attitude and make it a beautiful attitude and forgive those around us and give mercy, God promises us that we shall obtain mercy when we need it most. And so tonight, I want us just to take a minute and just wherever you are, if you're watching the video, for us to sit down and say, you know what? I've been emotionally hurt or whatever the case might be by X, Y, Z and whatever. And so tonight... Instead of demanding justice, okay, and the punishment that they deserve because of their wrongdoing, I want you to take that minute that you've got, and I want you to go before the Lord, and I want you to forgive, to show mercy, so that when the time comes, you can receive mercy from God Almighty. So I want you to, wherever you are, just close your eyes for a, few, for a few minutes. And I want you just to bring that person or people's names into your mind and just forgive them. And just say, Lord, these people have done me wrong. Although I've demanded justice, we'll set them free. So I'm going to pray now. And I just want you to bring to remembrance those people that have hurt you and have harmed you. Father, thank you that this beatitude that Jesus taught is for us so that we can show mercy and forgiveness to all those that have hurt us and that have harmed us in any way or form or fashion. And so, Lord, we tonight in our hearts, in our mind, we mention their names and we say, Lord, I forgive them. I show mercy to those and I set them free. I forgive the way the Lord forgave me and I show mercy so the Lord will show mercy to me because he forgave me of all my sin and therefore I forgive them all of their sin towards me. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us your word 
to guide us, to strengthen us, to give us wisdom, to be obedient to your word, Lord. But most of all, that we walk in the fruit of the Spirit. And so tonight, we choose to forgive and to set those people free. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Some of you might not be finished praying because you have a long list. <laughs> but some of us have a short list. So thank you once again for just listening. And, and I pray, really pray tonight that the Holy Spirit has, has spoken to your heart and that you've done what the Lord has called you to do, to forgive. Thank you very much. And I hope that the word is a lamp unto your feet and a light to your path so that we do not stumble in the darkness, especially in this world.